Griffin Update is our student-produced digital magazine show bringing you news, sports, and information from Missouri Western State University and the surrounding region. During each program, we will present an in-depth look at the people, places, and events that make Missouri Western and the Northwest region of Missouri a great place to call home. Hello, and thanks for watching Griffin Update. I'm Mackenzie Bose. And I'm Morgan Doyle. Today, our show covers a lot of ground, from events at Western, but also around St. Joseph. The first snow has hit town, and let me tell you, Christmas is a-coming. It does get me pretty excited for Christmas, and the snow is beautiful. However, the combination of my skills and ice collide a little. Are you one of those people that other people video because you're, like, falling all the time? Maybe. <laughs> Winter ice isn't the only ice I'm talking about, though. The Alchemist Club's Fire and Ice show was on November 1st. Reporter Lance Lawton was there to witness the various science experiments. The suds that are now coming spilling out of the mouth. Have you ever wondered how to make a pumpkin puke? Or how to fire up a whoosh bottle? The Alchemist Club performed both of these science experiments and more at the Fire and Ice show on Thursday, November 1st in Agenstein Hall. The Alchemist Club is a student science organization here at Western and their goal is to just hang out, explore the depths of the science world, and show it off to the community. The Fire and Ice Show, led by Club President Merle Phillips, replaced the former pumpkin blasting event held in past years. It's the first year of the Fire and Ice Show, um, but we did something similar last semester um, called the um, pumpkin blast. So we did a lot of the similar experiments, but this year um, the date happened to fall on after Halloween, so change the name, just semantics really. The show included hot coffee cans getting crushed by ice water, pouring a clear chemical onto a pumpkin that turns the chemical to blood red, and more typical science experiments that can be seen within schools. Um, honestly, just as a way to just reach out to the student body and the community at large and uh, really just show off a lot of science experiments that we really enjoy and to get people interested either early in their undergraduate careers um, or really just um, you know from elementary middle school high school just getting people interested at all. Junior biochemistry molecular biology major Rebecca Prest says that practice and preparation are the biggest factors for the show. We have to make sure that all of our reagents to get are together in one room um, Agenstein's a big place, so we're always running around going, oh no, where's the potassium iodide? Um, and just, yeah, practice, make sure that there's a lot of communication going on and that everything is going to be done in a safe manner. Both Phillips and Prest believe that the Fire and Ice show is a fun and educational event, especially for the kids and students. Just seeing the reactions on everybody's faces when the demos go perfectly and everything that we've been working so hard for goes correctly. So just really uh, kids of all ages getting that excited about science. Um, yeah, it's really the whole point and so it's really it's great whenever you can actually see that on people's faces. So. Reporting for Griffin Media, this is Lance Lawton. Those experiments are pretty neat. If only I were good at science. If anyone enjoys science and is interested in joining the Alchemist Club, look for meeting posters around Agenstein and Remington or contact either Rebecca Prest or Merle Phillips. You know what else is pretty neat? What's that? The way that the community gets out and supports the rest of the community. Supporting each other makes a world of difference. The seventh annual Walk for the Homeless was on Friday, November 2nd. Our very own Department of Criminal Justice, Legal Studies, and Social Work helped organize this event. I walked alongside other participants and followed the migration path the homeless take to access service for their basic needs. Check out this event. The seventh annual Walk for the Homeless started at 4 p.m. at the intersection of 6th and Messaney in downtown St. Joseph. On the walk, they made stops and explained the services that the homeless can get, including places like Northwest Health Services. Just to kind of grab some community support for our homeless. So everything from the walk helps support that, helps get ID cards for our homeless, birth certificates as well, and then transportation costs. So just helps them get some of the daily things that they need and um, all the proceeds go to that. So some of the main spots are uh, really needed services, so like our transportation system through the bus, um, that's huge. It's something that 
um, gets not just homeless but low income and a lot of our college students around and so uh, that's really important to us um, also you know United Way uh, is a huge giver back into our community Northwest Health Services we provide health care for the homeless in St. Joseph and then um, also there's a uh, the uh, community mission, a drop-in center, and then the crossing. They do huge things for our homeless, um, help support them in different ways. And so those are some of the things that we'll highlight along the walk today. Before the walk, the participants were armed with trash bags in hopes to clean up Greater St. Joseph. This event is a big deal because St. Joe has a real problem with homelessness. I don't know that a lot of people know that, but when you get down here, you really see that there are a lot of people struggling, that street homelessness is a big deal, but homeless doesn't just mean you live on the street. You may not just have stable housing. So I think it's really cool for people to get down here and see what's really going on. This walk is to raise awareness for the homelessness of St. Joseph. Reporting for Griffin Media, this is Mackenzie Bose. I'm impressed with the turnout that event had. It was really astounding to see all the people supporting everyone. I love seeing the bonding between strangers, kind of like on Red Friday. Go Chiefs! Am I right? Of course. Arrowhead <laughs> Stadium, or more known as Chiefs Kingdom, is located in Kansas City, Missouri. Reporter Sheena Kelly gives us the behind the scene look at what the Chiefs fans are all about. It's noon on Sunday, and Arrowhead Stadium, better known as Chiefs Kingdom, is filled with fans hoping for a victorious game. How about those Chiefs? Go Chiefs! Some say you can't have football without tailgating. The energy in the stadium's parking lot is at a high. Fans arrive as early as 7 a.m. for noon games with a variety of parking choices. Aretha Paul is a longtime tailgater and says that the energy in this environment is priceless. It's just like one big family. Um, strangers, you don't know. I mean, of course, 99% of the people you don't know, but it's like, you know, everybody treats you like family, at least for three to four hours. Some fans even come up with creative ways to spread the chief spirit. Cookie? Other fans go all out with their looks for tailgating and home games. Michael Wheeler, aka KC Superman, has been a well-known face at Arrowhead for more than a decade. This is my 23rd year running around right here. 23rd Super This year, he's hopeful for a Super Bowl for Kansas City. I never give up. I'm sure how bad it looks. As it gets closer to the start of the game. Tailgaters head in for a little pre-game excitement. <laughs> Although the parking lot is quiet after kickoff, you can still hear the fans cheering for their Kansas City Chiefs. Reporting for Griffin Media, this is Sheena Kelly. That's honestly one of my favorite places to go. I love the atmosphere. Sports stadiums just help you connect with people more. Speaking of, maybe you need to get out more and connect. What? Maybe you should go to B&J Skating Rink and make some new friends, like what reporter Kelsey Hall did. She takes us a little outside of St. Joseph to tell us more. Let's roll with it. Planning a creative and fun date night is tough in St. Joe when everyone is used to the same combination of dinner and a movie at Hollywood 10. Couples are becoming bored with the same routine around town. But finding your inner youth with your partner at BNJ Skating Rink is a fun alternative to bar hopping and dining. I do see quite a few couples here, and I think it would be very fun date night to just get to be in a different environment and enjoy the music as well. And we do have couple skate at the end of the session as well, so that would be fun. Although roller skating seems like something that remains a childhood memory, it's not uncommon to find college students making new ones at the nighttime sessions. Um, we do get college students that do come here and they do have fun here. We've had like sororities here for like a private party. And I think it would be a good job for college students. If skating isn't your thing, you can still play arcade games and grab a bite to eat. Because you can, uh, you can meet new people, I guess. I mean, it's not my thing, but you can meet new people. You can skate and a lot of games and stuff. 
So next time you're struggling with finding something new to do for your date, roll on down to B&J Skate Center, located north of St. Joseph off 71 Highway. For prices and hours of operation, visit bjskate.com. Thank you for watching, and this is Kelsey Hall reporting for Griffin Media. Hey Morgan. Hey what? Why be a hater when you can be a roller skater? Boom. Nope. Um, <laughs> you can stick to your puns, but I'll stick to singing in the shower. Wait, what? Why don't you sing for people to hear? We'll get into that after this break. One out of every four car accidents are caused by texting and driving. Wait, what did you just say? You heard me. That's better. Keep your eyes on the road. So, I sing all the time, but I'm just too scared to get up on stage. Well, maybe you should check out these ladies who are brave enough to. Reporter Bo Baker has more about the voice of Western. Western hosted their annual version of The Voice with many remarkable times, including duets and solo performances where they had to go through several rounds in order to make it to the finale. I think one of the main differences was the song choice and I had to bring the performance up a lot more than I had to with my other songs. And also there were a lot more people here tonight <laughs> that all got excited and that was pretty crazy. That was really fun. Well, one of the bigger things was we had an all-girl finalist we haven't had all-girl finalists before. This is a unique event that showcases the singing talents of Western students and has a different impact on each individual. Like when you see something like this and you really want to do it, just go ahead and go for it. It really is so much fun. That's the reason I did it. It just looked exciting and like something I would love. And so I went ahead and did it. I'm just meeting new people, like all type of people come up, up to me after the show. But like I'll see them around campus and I'll be like, oh my gosh, you did really good. Or I thought you were really funny. McCluskey won $1,000 for winning this year's The Voice. So everybody is curious to see what she's going to do with the money. I'm in college, so probably, <laughs> probably student loans. Um, but I mean, I'll definitely use some of it for fun stuff. <laughs> Congratulations, Kelsey, on your $1,000 prize and winning this year's The Voice. Don't spend your money all in one place. For Griffin Media, this has been Bo Baker. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't do that talent show. There's no way I'm that good. Well, maybe if you practice every single day, you can audition next year and win. We'll see about that. But speaking of having a voice, let's talk about our guest on campus. On November 13th, Missouri Western brought Christopher Wallace to campus. Wallace is an American television anchor and political commentator. He has won every broadcast news award, including three Emmys and the DuPont Columbia Silver Baton Award. He is also the only person to have served as a host or moderator of more than one of the major American Sunday morning political talk shows. McKinsey got a chance to attend the annual convocation to see what he had to say. Check out how it went. You know, first of all, on Tuesday, November 13th, Chris Wallace came to campus and had a breakfast with the student leaders of Missouri Western attended a press conference, and gave a speech, a view of Washington, at the 25th annual R. Dan Boulware Convocation. At the breakfast, he took questions about his views on Trump, his favorite stories as a reporter, and why he became a journalist. One of the things I always say is, read something that you disagree with. I know this is a very old-fashioned idea, but just if you're a liberal reading liberal media, or if you're conservative, just reading conservative media, I think it's a big mistake seek out and try to read something that that challenges your view of the world and not just opinions but facts and then you can almost triangulate and try to find the truth yourself but it's it ends up putting much more of a burden on you uh, when you're when you turn on uh, the, your computer and, and go onto the internet to try to figure out what's truth what's what's uh, opinion and what is just false 
Wallace is an award-winning journalist and television host. During his speech, he made jokes to keep the audience engaged while he talked about his journalistic life. I think it's really cool that Chris is able to socialize with the students and kind of get to network with them, get to answer any questions they might have. I think it's really neat um, that he takes the time just to do that at all. I think it's also really neat to see how many students are interested in coming out and um, actually meeting with him, asking him questions, see how many people actually did research and stuff. It's really cool to me to get to see that opportunity. This is Mackenzie Bose reporting for Griffin Media. I love meeting people who are making a living doing what I'm studying. Speaking of studies, you graduate in May. First off, are you ready? I'm a little nervous to get started, but I'm super ready to just get out there. But don't you love our school? Of course I do. I would tell anybody to come here. But starting off was a little scary. It's definitely a different world than high school. Are you the first in your family to come here? Actually, my older sister came here, so I'm kind of a legacy. Did she give you any good advice? She did, and she helped me with it a lot. Reporter Alicia Otto met up with another Griffin family to showcase what Western is all about. Welcome to Missouri Western Potential Griffin. Our campus offers many beautiful views, buildings, and areas for you to explore. From the moment you get to campus, there are so many things to see and do. Right now, let's take a look at how Hannah Adams shows off the campus to her brother, White. So I brought my brother on campus this weekend uh, so we could have a weekend full of jam-packed activities, such as going to the football game together. He is in band at his high school, and I, I just love our Golden Griffin marching band, and I figured that he would enjoy their performance. Scanlon Hall is where new Griffins live. In the commons, some griffs check their mail, pick up packages, and can get and cook snacks. And the Blum Student Union has the food court, the dining hall, and very importantly, ATM machines. The best part about my campus visit today um, was uh, the, the football game. Maybe football isn't your thing, or even the band. But rest assured, here at Missouri Western, there is something that will appeal to you. And it just might be the same thing that your sister liked when she was a Griffin. This is Alicia Otto. I just love being a Griffin. Griff up. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Well, that's all we have for you right now. But hang tight and stay tuned for the Griffin Newscast and Bailey Sports Report after this message. At Missouri Western, it's on us. It's on us, all of us to take responsibility and stop sexual assault. To create a campus environment where everyone is safe and feels safe. To realize that ending sexual assault is not an individual endeavor. But a collective effort. To understand that it affects not only students, but faculty and staff members alike. At Missouri Western, we take action. It's on us to look out for each other and not look the other way. We step up and say something. We support survivors. We are going to be a part of the solution and not the problem. It's on us to intervene and take responsibility. So take action because we can and will make a difference. At Missouri Western, it's on us to, to put, put an, an end to sexual, sexual assault. assault. Begin by taking the pledge at itsonus.org. On this Griffin newscast, the results are in. We'll have the outcomes of some of the most important ballot measures from last week's election and tell you how these new laws will affect you. That and much more is straight ahead. The Griffin Newscast starts now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brittany Price. Last week, voters across the country went to the polls to speak their voice. One of the measures of Missourians voted on was an increase in the minimum wage. Proposition B passed with 62% of the vote. So what does this mean for Missouri workers? The minimum wage will increase 85 cents to $8.60 an hour on January 1, 2019. Then increase an additional 85 cents per hour each year until 2023 when it will reach $12 per hour. This change will particularly affect student workers that make minimum wage. Our allotments, say a federal work study, uh, campus employment funds that we have, we wouldn't see a corresponding increase in that uh, to help us cover it. So uh, students would simply earn their award in, in uh, fewer hours. Another measure passed by Missouri voters was Amendment 2. 
Passing with 66% of the vote, this amendment legalizes the medical use of marijuana in Missouri. The amendment was one of three medical marijuana measures on the ballot, but was the only one to pass. Known as New Approach Missouri, the new law imposes a 4% tax on medical marijuana. Revenue from these taxes will go towards veterans programs. New Approach Missouri is also unique in that it will allow patients to grow their own marijuana. Patients who wish to take advantage of this will have to pay a $100 license fee and grow their marijuana in a state registered facility. I think the side effects with marijuana are a lot less than with the pharmaceutical companies. Um, people OD on pills all day long, but I don't think you can OD on marijuana. After a decade at Western, the Dean and Executive Director of Western Institute is stepping down. Gordon Mapley recently announced his plans to retire at the end of this calendar year. Mapley also served as the Dean and Executive Director of the Instructional Media Center, which is involved with nearly every technological aspect on campus. In his time at Western, Mapley was instrumental in growing the university's offering of online courses and has been passionate about helping students get their degrees. There is no word yet on Mapley's replacement. The International Center recently hosted an exciting celebration of all cultures on campus. The annual International Fair gave attendees the chance to meet some of Western's international students and get a taste, literally, of different cultures. The event included free food, music, and a fashion show, and cultural presentations. It was free and open to the public and provided a great educational opportunity to those who attended. The intention is, you, you know, you go to college and you either break out of your original hometown or you um, cultivate your hometown in some degree and I think that would include um, understanding different cultures and allowing diversity to come into St. Joe but also for people of St. Joe to understand diversity so that when they do enter the workplace in place like Kansas City or surrounding areas they're not completely taken off guard and unaware of how to handle the situation. The 48-hour film festival has called it a wrap for its eighth straight year. Seven teams participated in the competition, which was held from November 2nd through the 4th. Each team was challenged to create a film in 48 hours. They were given a specific character and their job, a certain prop, and a specific line of dialogue. All other aspects of the film were left to the teams. Some of the awards teams competed for included best writing, best editing, and best acting. We spoke with one of the nominees about the experience. Staying up and trying to function as a person while doing acting and editing was just very difficult, but I had such a good time and no matter who I worked with, I feel like 48 is definitely a really good opportunity for anybody who wants to be a filmmaker. A screening and award ceremony was held in Potter Hall Theater on Thursday, November 8th. The best overall award went to a film entitled Rising Star. Pick up a copy of the Griffin News to find out more about all the stories making headlines at Missouri Western. You can also find us on Facebook or thegriffinnews.com. I'm Brittany Price, and that's your news in five minutes. Thanks for joining us. On my honor, I will never betray my badge. My integrity, my character, or the public trust. I will always have the courage to hold myself. And others accountable for my acts. I will always uphold the Constitution. My community and the agency I serve. 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 Welcome to the Griffin Update Sports Report, your place to catch up on all Griffin sports. I'm your host, Bailey Ketchum. There was a lot of action at Western this weekend. First up, football had what was thought to be their last game of the year and senior day on Saturday against Lindenwood. Reporter Morgan Doyle was there to cover it. Temperatures were below freezing for senior day here at Missouri Western as the Griffins recognized 16 seniors before hosting Lindenwood for their final regular season game. Both teams started out slow, with the score just 6-6 six six going into halftime, but then Western blew the game open. Anthony Williams recovered a fumble for the Griffins' first touchdown of the day, and later Donnell Hawkins would make the score 23-6 with just 8 minutes left to play. 
Lindenwood rallied back though, answering with a touchdown before having a successful onside kick to get the ball back and score yet again with just 36 seconds left in the game. As the game went on, I just I, I looked in everyone's eyes and, and I could see that, that we were ready to, <coughs> we were ready to fight the whole the whole game even even when they scored last in that last uh, minute. Uh, we knew it wasn't over and, we, and as you can see, you know, we, we kept battling so you can't ask for much more than that. The Griffs made it back down the field and with one second on the clock, Marino completed this pass to Joe Horn Jr. who tossed it off to Mac. Mac was tackled at the three yard line, ending the game. That was tough, that one. That stings more than probably anyone I've ever been a part of, to be honest with you. You know, high opportunity to win and just didn't pull through and hats off to Lynn and Wood. I thought their defense played phenomenal against our offense. We did give them some first downs, you know, and got in some situations where we didn't play uh, uh, defenses the way we wanted to and didn't tackle some things the way we wanted to, you know. And, um, you know, I think offensively we would have got a couple more first downs, the game would have been over. After the loss, everyone believed Missouri Western season to be over, but on Sunday night, the team found out they made a bowl game. That's time and place has yet to be announced. They finished their regular season six and five. For Griffin Media, I'm Morgan Doyle. This is the first winning season they've had since 2015. In other sports news, men's basketball is on a hot winning streak that they extended this weekend with two wins against Winona State and Upper Iowa. Women's basketball also had a strong weekend with two wins against Upper Iowa and Southwest Minnesota State. That's all we have for you today in sports. For more information on Griffin Athletics, check out gogriffins.com. Well, that brings us to the end of our show. You can watch our show on MWSU TV Channel 12. You can also catch us on the Griffin Update Vimeo and YouTube channels and the Missouri Western Student Media homepage. And make sure you check out the next edition of the Griffin News. For all of us here at Griffin Update, thank you for watching.